Hello, I'm Sherry Sermon, Director of Crail Education. We're excited to share this series, Creative Spa for Teachers, with everyone who educates children, whether at school or at home. This is a special time and place where you can rejuvenate, refresh, and rekindle your creative energy. While you're learning about today's ideas, you're going to also receive great tips on how to help children use color to express their thoughts and feelings and restore their energy. I'm thrilled to introduce today's guest, Walla from Colorways, a certified color therapist, certified color time consultant, author, and blogger. Walla helps people explore how color influences and reflects their emotions. Walla, we're delighted to have you join us. I'm so excited to be here. Walla, please start by telling us your story of how you became a color therapist and started to use color to connect people with their inner selves. So my story with color really starts with me living in Tokyo. And I was there and in Harajuku, part of Tokyo, where everybody dresses up. Everybody was dressing up in a lot of colors and vibrant, different experimental colors. And at that time, I was able to buy it but I wouldn't be, when I get home I wouldn't be able to put it on and that started me with questioning what is it what's wrong with my relationship with color because I know that it looks good on me and so it's not that so what is it that really is triggering my fear from wearing color I started learning about it and I started doing these courses and I understood with that is because I was only able to work to wear darker colors and even brown, which is a color at that time was not one of the colors that I really enjoyed or really had a special connection with. I just put it on because it felt comfortable. And this led me to understand that actually I am hiding. I don't want to express. Because whenever you're putting any color, especially bright ones, you're telling people something about you. When you're wearing or thinking about or using darker, deeper colors, you're kind of like hiding it in and keeping it within yourself and this started me on a quest of why is it that i feel like i needed to hide and why is it that i was so afraid for people to see how i felt that day or a part of me that i wanted to express with those colors and as i worked on it it really taught me that i was really scared of my vulnerability and scared of showing people all my different emotions and all the different things that I was feeling and experiencing. Working with a color therapist myself, it really helped me make peace with my vulnerability and all the spectrum of emotions that I have to really understand myself better. And that worked with me in such a brilliant way that I wanted to do it 10 years ago. I started doing it for everybody else. And I just want everybody to know this really simple tool that we can use so many things and can help you in so many ways, especially the children. Beautiful personal story, really insightful. While in March is Color Therapy Month, a wonderful time each year for us to pause and consider how color can change our attitudes and infuse us with energy or calm our mindsets. Can you explain what color therapy is? and how immersing ourselves in color can impact the way we feel. I like to call it a holistic type of science, but it really focuses on the frequency and the energy of how colors impact us, how we can use the spectrum of color and understand how it affects us and help in a way manipulate it, work with it to feel better, understand ourselves better and really make peace with all these different colors because whenever you're attracted to a color or repelled by a color you are getting a message from your subconscious and your frequency because colors actually don't exist they are the translation of the brain to different wavelengths and each wavelength holds a frequency of a thought an emotion and even a body part so color therapy works with how can color influence your mind, your body, your feelings. Well, some people may think that color therapy is nouveau, but actually chromotherapy dates back thousands of years mm -hmm. used in ancient China, Greece, India, and Egypt. Can you give us some historical perspective on color therapy and explain how various color associations can be tied to 
cultural traditions, as well as personal memories and experiences. A lot of people do think that color is new, but color can be dated back to the Egyptians. And even Plato mentioned it in his description of Atlantis as, you know, one of the main things that Atlanteans used. But you can find it in ancient Egypt described in papyruses. They would know what plant would heal what using the color of the plant, knowing what they're mixing. How can they fix something using that color? It's quite fascinating. The Greeks used it in their temples to symbolize different gods and goddesses. And then in different religions now, we see different colors being symbolized. For example, in Islam, green is one of the most important color in that religion. And that comes from the prosperity aspect and the peaceful aspect that that religion wants to portray. And if we're looking at cultural aspects, it's really interesting to see in the West and um, many people would use black for grieving. But in the East, in India, for example, they would use white for grieving. They look at it as a celebration of one's life. In the West, we more look at it as a very hard time that we have to enclose and hide in. Fascinating. And weddings also have different colors oh, yes. associated with different houses. In the West, it's more about purity so the purity of the bride that's why you see it symbolized in a white dress because white is a big symbol also of purity and then in middle eastern for example where i come from brides should wear green they don't do it anymore but traditionally they would wear green and that would symbolize the fertility of the bride the prospects and the abundance of the bride because green is a color of growth we'll talk about it more um, i believe later and then in in india it's red so it's all these different symbols and symbologies it also tells you how each culture views a certain celebration a certain way i love the cultural context and then you often put that into uh, contrast with the very personal we talk about how color has not only cultural roots but personal meaning you often say when you find your colors you find yourself can you explain what that means this means a couple of things but for our purpose today i will focus on one one of them is a service that i provide on my website which is a quiz about that's very energetically focused but then the other part is when we find the colors you're attracted to the colors you're repelled by the colors you feel symbolize you or symbolizes the stuff that's happening around you it's when we find what's deeply deeply within you what is it that you're challenged with and what is the solution for it too because the colors we are attracted to also provide us with a solution not only the problem so i'll give you a quick example usually a lot of people will come to me and they'll be like i'm really attracted to orange and, and blue or navy blue for some reason this combination i usually call it my breakup combination <laughs> because usually when people are attracted to this color they've had a certain loss a loss of a relationship, a loss of a loved one, or a loss of even a job. And that takes us into a cycle of grief. And orange helps us process this grief, learn to fall in love with life again, and learn to fall in love with new things again. And then the navy blue also tells us to trust in the structure and find the discipline to releasing and also moving forward in our lives. So it shows us the problem and it also shows us the solution. I'm excited that Walla is going to demonstrate two art experiences that will help us personally connect with color. And these are both ideas that you can introduce to children. The first is called watercolor postcards. Walla, you explained that it's best to start with some color visualization to explore a range of colors that appeal to us and watch them blend together. So we can be thinking about how our feelings flow into one another. Watercolor is a perfect art medium for this experience since the paint and the water really do reinforce this idea of our, our emotions flowing. But before we begin, I want us all to kind of take a moment, close our eyes and just breathe in and breathe out. Allowing the sound to anchor you
Taking a few deep, soft breaths. And as you anchor in, I want you to choose a word that represents a feeling that you have or something that you want to remind yourself of. My word today is going to be love. And then I want you to visualize and see all the colors that represent that word for you. Is it one color? Is it two? Is it many, many different colors? Just allow yourself to see that and feel it. And then when you're ready, you can take a deep inhale in and exhale through your mouth and you can open your eyes and we can begin the first exercise. So we are going to use the marker and watercolor pad for this. I want to also use the watercolor crayons. As you can see them here. I really enjoyed playing around with those. So what we're going to do first is choose one of the colors or the color that showed up for you as this feeling. So for me, as I said, it was love. So I'm going to use a magenta pink and then we're going to lighten it up to be more pink and I'm going to write the word in the center like this. And then I'm just going to color in a bit. And then I want you to bring in all the different colors that this word can be expressed in. And then just draw them either as hearts, circles, however it feels like, but do it freely. So for example, for me, the love of creativity is more like a purple that I will use and I'll put hearts here. Friendship love is something that I like to think of as blue because there's a big thing about trust and communication in friendships. The love for my mom, I like to think about it as orange because there's like a big connection that is like full of strong emotions with my mom. To love my work, I like to think of it as yellow because my work gives me a lot of strength and just keep drawing and thinking the love of of learning and growing i like to think of it as green the love of my home reminds me of the forest <laughs> the love of my dogs i can think of it as like peach and just keep drawing all these different hearts different colors all around it and i'm just going to repeat some of the colors and have them around so I can just fill up different sizes, different hearts. And I can also think of people, for example, one of my best friends reminds me of red. My husband loves navy blue, so I'm going to put him in here as well. And I'll just keep going with the different hearts. And then there is a beautiful brush that comes in with this set. And then I'm just going to get a bit of water and I'm going to start blending it all together. First, I'm going to start blending the love. And then I'm going to go in also on other colors and splash some of that on it, connecting them together, connecting the green with the pink, the purple the more you kind of like blend in the colors you see some touches of different color that goes into it so the orange is blending in with the blue a bit and the green like all types of love can feel the same feel warm and big and small and it can all be mixed together and this can become a reminder for all the things that remind you of love and all the people and all the colors that remind you of love because love can look like so many different things if we allow ourselves to see it. I just love using these crayons. <laughs> and you can take some colors from the different parts and connect them to the rest. And this is <laughs> what my card looks like. 
you don't have to be an artist <laughs> you just have to enjoy and connect with all these different colors i'm excited about the second art demo that's called colorful hearts leaning again into this theme of love and connection and this again focuses on our personal connection to color and helps us think about our relationships with others it's a great way to get started with color therapy seeing color as an intimate personal experience and insightful uh, because color therapy shouldn't be a chore or a burden. It really is opening a window into understanding ourselves. So Mala, please show us how to make colorful heart sculpture, this time with a three-dimensional art material. So first, we are again going to do a little bit of connecting with the heart because we're going to be working with the heart. I want you to place your hand on your chest and just take a few deep breaths and just connect with your heart and all the feelings that exist and are alive in your heart today. Feelings that feel easy to feel and feelings that are not so easy to feel. All these feelings exist inside of us and they're all valid and they're all important. And after you do that, I want you to start with choosing a base for your heart. So for this, we're using the Vivid cardstock. And I just want to use it as a background to build the heart on because the more colors we can use, the more fun we can have. And just think about what color represents you and your heart. Which one do you feel is the strongest? So for me today, it feels very yellow or green, but maybe more yellow today. <laughs> and then we are going to use the model magic to build this heart. So this model magic comes with all these different colors. So it comes in with blue, green, yellow, um, red. And it also comes in black and white. And we're also gonna use the black and white and I'll tell you why in a minute. So using 3D materials and things to move and things that you have to stretch really helps also release the stress from us and just really help us kind of move things around, heat up our palms. And that is just really, really important for just releasing daily stress and daily things. And just kind of stretch all these different colors and just move them around so we can see which connects with what. And they're all going to be on top of this color that I chose that connects me or that I see as my heart. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the black and white element. A lot of the times we have black and white feelings. It's either good or bad. Whatever you see is good or bad. And it's really important to teach children and ourselves that no emotion, no feeling is bad or good. It's just feelings. And everything in between is, is a colorful spectrum. So this is what we're going to work on. So we're going to start with building the black and white. But first, we can also just draw a heart as a base for ourselves and kind of follow. And I'm going to use the watercolor pencils as well. I'm just going to draw a heart here to help me build my heart. And I'm going to put the, I'm going to start with a bit of the black here. And that will also represent the feelings that we don't like. And that's okay to have all these feelings. And then the white feelings, we're also going to connect them. Because we all sometimes, and all these feelings, exist in our hearts. And then green is a feeling of peace for me that exists in my heart and that the color that I really kind of strive to be. Most people look to be happy. I look to be peaceful. <laughs> and I just love working on finding that neutral spot. And then I'm going to also use yellow in between the black and white as well, because yellow is a color that reminds us to be courageous and courage is also important but i also put it here because yellow not only reminds us to be courageous it also reminds us that fear exists and that courage is fear walking so we can really work with that and then i'm gonna move i'm gonna add some some red which is all which will represent all the feelings that i have 
about being passionate about things, loving different things, and just kind of like pile them on top of each other. Also red sometimes can represent anger feelings. So we can also bring it closer to the parts that are here. Or frustration sometimes. So we can also bring it here. Also takes courage to acknowledge these feelings. And then blue <laughs> is feelings of trust, relaxation and calm I really like and fluidity and just being flexible and fluid they're very important feelings to feel and I'm just kind of also going to connect it to different places like this and just keep building it until it has all the colors of how much calm I have now I'm just connecting with all the feelings that exist in your heart right now and remember that your heart is full of different things and this is my heart finished. <laughs> I wonder what yours look like. And that added dimensionality of touching the model magic just brings all of our senses into it. And of course, children love creating things that are three-dimensional, like a sculpture. Well, thank you so much for both of those art demos that we can enjoy ourselves and take to kids. Well, our viewers are finishing their watercolor postcards and colorful hearts. I'd like to remind everyone that it's easy to stay in touch and be updated on the future creative spas for teacher sessions and the many other colorful learning programs. Just sign up for our free Crayola Education e-newsletter. Each month, new teaching ideas and tips for taking care of yourself will soar into your email box. While you've shared so many great insights about using color, how can our viewers follow you online so we can keep learning? And what topics will we find when we go to your blog and website? So you can find me on color-ways.com. I'm also active on Instagram. I talk about different things, color in your wardrobe, your visualizations. How can you bring color into your everyday life, in your home, in your interior? I like to mix it up that way. Well, what last bit of advice or closing comments would you like to make so that viewers can be thinking about using color to understand and care for themselves? Don't be afraid of any color that feels uncomfortable. This color that feels uncomfortable is a very important color for you to work on, to understand, to see what is it that you need. Let the colors open you up to the spectrum of emotions that you have and find acceptance in all of the colors in order. Let the colors guide you. Check what colors you have in your closet. Check what colors you reach out to. Even the fruits in the supermarket. <laughs> Which ones are you going for? And then figure out what they mean, how they feel for you. What does it symbolize for you? It can teach you so much about what's really going on within. We don't pause enough to understand and listen, but when we do, it makes a huge impact on ourselves. We want to thank Walla from Colorways for inspiring us today. And a special thanks to everyone who joined us for this session. Stay well, stay focused on creativity, and embrace your colors. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>